<laughs> wow, seven albums in ten years. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, uh, well, that's, uh, Tony likes writing songs. You know, he's uh, he's mad for it. Uh, I mean, we we record an album, rehearse, go on tour. I mean, a couple of weeks after we come back from tour, Tony's at it again in his studio at his house, uh, putting down ideas for the next bunch of songs. You know, um, and we uh, we tour all around Europe. Um, so we, you know, we got a good fan base, and we keep the the albums coming out. Um, so that's what we do. We could take bands do take longer between albums, but uh, we don't see the point in that really. Uh, if the songs are nearly ready, then we go in the studio and start working on them. Uh, and once they're completed, then uh, that's the time to. Uh, three months later, we'd probably release an album, and then three months later, that we're probably on tour again. Uh, so just the way it seems to work out these days, you know. Um, we don't do uh, four years between albums or something like that. It's uh, We try and keep relative with our fans, and uh, we send them newsletters out, let us know what's happening with us. And um, So it's, it's down to Tony wanting to write songs at this, at this pace and record, and we're lucky to have a good studio in Wolverhampton where we can get in uh, pretty much all the time. And, and work on stuff and demo stuff and you know, see what's going down on the album. There's, there's quite, he writes more than uh, we need for the album, so there's a lot ends up on the floor <laughs> uh, that never gets used, never, doesn't get finished, you know. The writing process for new songs. Ah, right. Uh, yeah, as I say, um, uh, Tony will start when we've finished touring, when he's had a break. Uh, and he'll put down ideas on on his guitar uh, with a drum machine and a, and a keyboard uh, and get um get, put the bass lines down. Uh, so he'll he'll demo everything really and write f loads of ideas far more than we could ever use for one album. Uh, and he brings it to the studio and I come in with him and start singing a chorus um, on probably three or four songs for him to go back and carry on working with uh, <clears throat> so he's got s some words at least they might not be the the, the finished uh, uh, lyrics but it's something for him to go oh yeah that's how the chorus will go uh, and he can develop it develop the rest of the song around that and he'll, and then when he's got three or four ready uh, he'll come back to the studio and go okay I, I know uh, I'm pretty much know what direction the album's going to now and uh, he'll uh, he'll go. I'll go away and, and have a break, and he'll go home and, and start w putting lyrics down, proper words. We come back in again and uh, start recording, and um, I do all my vocals, and we get the arrangement of the songs together, uh, get the band in, and they do all their parts. Uh, it's the same process normally, album by album. Um, and when everybody's finished, we go, okay, well, that's 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 great. That's the perfect album for now. We can't improve that at the moment. Uh, so we mix it and it uh, comes out by SPV three months later in the shops, hopefully. So that's, and then we go on tour. So it's, just, it's, it's you know, I'm the first one to hear uh, everything and put some effort, put some work into with the, with the vocals. And, and it, it develops from there. And that's normally the case for every album we do. Uh, Tony wrote uh, the, the, the first track on the album, Live Till You Die. And within the lyrics uh, that ended up being the real words, there's a line that says, um, the starlight on the shadow garden falls and there's no escape. Uh, so I don't know which came first, Escape from the Shadow Garden, or the lines, that, and that made the line in the song. Um, but I think, I think uh, he, he got a good title. Uh, and he, he put that he came from the words in that song, I believe. Uh, and it's uh, it, it can mean uh, many things. Uh, it depends what's happening in your life, and you in a rut, and you want to get out of here. You know, it's it's all it depends on the. It's all personal to the listener. You know, uh, the person. Okay, uh, it's, um, and it's uh, uh, the the artwork uh, is uh, done. But to reflect the the title and, and some lyrics in the song, uh, and Tony will sit down with Rodney Matthews in his house in Wales and go through what he'd like to see on the front cover, uh, keeping the storyteller there. We keep things 
as a thread between the albums, you know, artwork-wise, like the storyteller, like the uh, the Citadel in the Distance, which has been used um, f- from Chase the Dragon, as in the tree, but the, the tree from Chase the Dragon has been developed far more now, it's far more colourful, and it has weird fruit coming off it in the shape of question marks. And what's all that about, you know? So it depends, it, it's down to whatever you think it's about, you know, it's, I couldn't really tell you what, exactly what it's about. Uh, I've got my own thoughts, you know. Oh, question marks, question this. There's a bit of Alice in Wonderland in there with the signpost with the name of the album on there, Scout from the Shadow Garden. But there's there's hands pointing which way and the other way, and you don't know which way to go. Uh, so that's that's a bit from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and it's very colourful, and Rodney's done a great job again. Thank you. Um, and so Escape from the Shadow Garden. It was a it was a good title. Uh, it could mean many things. Uh, it relates to Probably a, a, one of the other songs, well, it definitely relates to a song on the album called um, Falling for the Big Plan. Um, about, um, just so you just to explain a bit more, um, there's a line in here um, uh, Her ship has been sailing, she's missed it over the years. <laughs> um, um, it's She's been missing chances to get out of her ruts, to get out of her shadow garden, you know. Uh, and escape and have a, a new life, you know, a, a free a life of freedom. Uh, so it's, you know, the, the lyrics influence the, 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 the title uh, and the title probably influenced the writing of that song as well. So that they work on each other, really. Uh, so that's pretty much what the Escape from the Shadow Garden is about, basically, if you can understand any of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's uh, yes, a lovely ballad. I think it's uh, "I'll Stand by Your Side" when you're when you're down. It's, it's standing by people who you think who you love and you think the world of, who are having a bad time or down or you know, not or you know desperate for uh, some happiness. <laughs> uh, and you, I'll stand by you and I'll help you through this period, you know, of bad or sadness, or they've had something bad happen to them. And so it's just sticking by your friends and your family and, and helping them in times of need. Uh, don't fall asleep. It's, uh, it reminds me a little bit, it's reminiscent to me of On a Storyteller's Night, the song, but but in a ballad form, you know. Uh, and, uh, uh, just uh, keep, you keep your magic, <laughs> your magic lantern burn, you know. It's all Storyteller's Night burning and that. And I love it. And uh, it brings all that the Storyteller's Night song back to me. It's lovely. So that's that's what that song's about, yeah. Hey, a big hit, <laughs> falling for the big plant. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it's um, yeah. I, I, like I said, uh, this uh, young girl, she's got stuck in a rut, and uh, p- probably when you when you leave school and your careers officer, they advise you on what you know what you want to do with your life, what what job do you want to go into, a career. And they have this big plan, don't they? We can just do this, and you can just go to that, and that will lead to that. And you go, mm, okay, fine. But it doesn't work out usually like that, and you get stuck in some rut, some crap job you don't want to be in, or some situation you don't want to be in, right? And you want to head for the border, you know. Uh, the lines in that in the song, um, uh, uh, it's the dead of night crossed with holy water, Full moon shining in her eyes, with no appetite, heading for the border. Black dress like somebody died. Oh, God. It's lovely words. Uh, it's, it's just like, get, get me over the border, get me out of here. I, I, I ain't falling for the big plan anymore, you know. <laughs> uh, when you want a change of life or career, you know, that's what it's all about. And it's got a great hook, and I think it's going to go down great on stage, because it's definitely in the stage show. Yes, yeah, a heavy rock and roll track, people. Ugh, very good. Uh, very up-tempo, rock and roll, 50s stuff. Yeah, too many clowns. The clowns are, it's about politicians. <laughs> Once again, here we go. It's about the, the politicians in the world, governments, and uh, they're quite devoid of ordinary people. You know, they live in this wonderland of their own they get it you, you vote for them you get them in and then they then they promise you the world and oh yeah i'll vote for them 
and then they, they don't come up with it, and you end up in the shit, basically, because <laughs> you, you put them in government. Um, too many clowns, they're just getting in the way of people's lives. They're politicians, and they in every country around the world. And, you know, they've all got red noses on and baggy trousers and big feet <laughs> and white faces. Too many clowns. Yeah, but very totally up up uh, tempo rock and roll track. Great. And we're doing that on stage as well. <laughs> You're picking the stage show here, man. <laughs> Oh, yes. The art of compromise. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. It starts off a nice intro, and then it uh, ends up being um, uh, up-tempo. Uh, it's uh, it's great. Uh, well, well, compromise. Um, when you're in a relationship, uh, you can't have it all your own way, can you? <laughs> um, it's, it's only going to work if you have give and take in that relationship. Uh, and it's it's knowing uh, the uh, the art of being uh, uh, the art of compromise. It's, it's having that knowledge and knowing how to you know live uh, compromise within the situation, give and take, and you know you can't have it all your own way. Uh, and then that's the only way that that relationship will work really. Uh, great song, and that's what it's all about. That's what the words are about. You know, uh, uh, relationships. My voice? I don't know. <laughs> um, I uh, well, yeah, I get asked all the time. I don't, I don't do anything special for my voice. In fact, in the past, I've been very bad to it <laughs> over the years. I, I would imagine, like most singers are, you know, smoking and drinking. Uh, but I've calmed down a lot on all that now, so that's not a problem. Um, I've been lucky with my voice; it's very strong, I think. And uh, I like. I like to not just use the same voice. I've got, I think I've got two or three voices inside my head, uh, in my throat. Uh, on this album, some of the songs required me to be quite uh, use a gritty approach, because there's that much happening heavy-wise in the background. In, sorry, in the background uh, with the band playing, uh, the guitars and drums and everything. That I've got to really grit it out, so, and it really suits it, and it makes it more rock orientated. My voice, uh, but I, I just, I try to. Not shout too much. To, you know, you know, when you're talking to people at a gig, it's it's nice to meet people, and I love doing that, of course. Uh, but I can't. Everybody wants to you know, have a chat, and like we're having now, but in a gig situation where the DJ's playing or there's a band on, and you, you you get somebody shouting down your ear, your ear, and you've got to do the same back to them just so to be heard. And that's the worst thing I can possibly do. After I've done a show, I have to keep quiet, keep my mouth shut. I can still smile and, and all right, man, put my thumbs up. And but I can't really do the chat thing because uh, I'd have no voice the next morning and that would be terrible for the next show, for all those people coming to see us and, oh, Bob's lost his voice because he was talking too loud last night. You know, singing's not a problem. It's uh, it's it's doing interviews and chatting in noise, you know, that I have to raise my voice, so that's the worst thing. Apart from that, I don't have a problem and I'm I'm very lucky. And I just I go on the stage and it's brilliant. I mean the music and the crowd really lift me, and I could sing all night and sing as high as you like, you know, all night. It's it's you get the adrenaline going and it really makes you feel great. Uh, but then I have to take it easy the next day. That's all. Okay. Uh, well, yes, we, 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 not the whole band, the bass player. We uh, when we did uh, an album called Good Night LA. In uh, with Keith Olsen producing in uh, 1990, uh, we had uh, we were up against it time wise, and uh, the bass player came in. Uh, who, Keith Olsen knew the bass player, uh, and he, we, he offered his house. He had a, a, a studio in his house, uh, uh, of which we could do some keyboards. We, we sent Mark Stanway up there to work on the keyboards while we were while Tony was doing the guitars and I was doing vocals. Uh, so we, we know the bass player, but um, and he came in and he, after that he did some backing vocals for us, I believe. Uh, so um, yeah, we know him, for, but that was a long time ago. I haven't uh, seen or heard of them since. So I'm looking forward to working with them. I've seen them uh, on YouTube and I've heard the records, and they sound very good. They've got a great audience, and we're hoping that put the two audiences together, and um, we'll have a, a sold-out, massive show. You know, that's the idea and help each other really you know a good package and i think it's good in this day for have a good package and you know for people to spend a lot of money coming to see bands and, and traveling and that so 
give them the value for money. And I think Saga Magnum or Magnum Saga, which it will be on a 50-50 basis, you know, uh, will turn into somebody will come on second and first. Um, depending on where you're popular most in Germany, that will be who decides who headlines. But we both get the lights and the PA, so it's a double headline. It's not support band and, and, and main band, you know. It's not like that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and we'll be the support. They support us and we support them. But but we both get exactly the same time and, and everything, so it's not a support situation with both there putting on the, uh, the full show, you know. So, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great tour. I, I, I know, I know. It's been like that for some time now, honestly. Uh, we were lucky enough to, and I don't know why, we just can't seem to get promoters interested in having Magnum in France. You know, it's been like it for years now. We we haven't played in Paris uh, until... We, we played Paris last tour, and we hadn't played in Paris for about three tours before that, which is a terrible state of play. But there's nothing we can do about that, you know. Some bands tour all around France, and they, you know they promote us, love them, and we don't get a chance to play in France. Um, we played there last time, just outside Paris, a club, and the promoter was very good with us, and it was packed out. So I don't know why we're not doing that show on this tour. Uh, something's happened, or okay, but it's a real pity, it's a real shame, and sorry, people. There you go. Oh, uh, no, I haven't heard of anything like that, no. Well, no. <laughs> um, we, we, when, the album, when the album comes out, there is um, uh, a DVD bonus disc with the album, uh, with the Digipack, which was uh, four uh, songs uh, live on the last tour, uh, on four, four different shows. Uh, so that is coming out with the album. There's like 32 minutes of, of uh, performance there. Uh, so that is definitely done and, and ready to come out. But I, I can't, I don't know, and I'm not aware that we're going to film anything on this tour. But I might be totally wrong. You know, we'll see what happens. It might happen. But I don't know of that at the moment. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Cowley from Magnum. I hope you're going to enjoy our new album, Escape from the Shadow Garden, and try and come and see us on tour if you possibly can somewhere. And thank you for sticking with Magnum all these years, and you're brilliant, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks a lot. Take care, people. Bye-bye.